Welcome to dealing with materials data. Uh, this is a course on collection analysis and interpretation of data. Uh, we are looking at uh, module 6 and this is a second case study and this is a case study on error analysis. Uh, we have looked at this data earlier, this is cyanide interaction with uh, hydrogen, it is a gas phase uh, reaction and uh, reaction rate is uh, given uh, with error and it is given in 10 to the power 10 centimeter cube mole inverse uh, second inverse and the temperature is given in Kelvin. We have done this exercise. Uh, we have tried to, um, but we have not done the error analysis uh, a bit carefully. So, what we want to do is that okay, so we will take this reaction rate data, we want to fit it to this uh, form because we know that it should go as some constant temperature to the power b and uh, by some theoretical arguments we know that b is 2.45 exponential minus Ea by Rt. So, you can uh, we have done this exercise of fitting, we have taken k by t to the power b as the quantity and we have taken log on either side. So, it gives log a minus Ea by rt. So, by 1 by t versus log k by t to the power b, if you fit then you can get the uh, intercept from which you can calculate a and from the slope you can calculate Ea by r. And the paper gives these values as 3.1 plus or minus 0.3 into 10 power 5 and 9.3 plus or minus 0.2 kilojoules, uh, the A and E A. How do you get these parameters? And we have done this exercise earlier, and uh, but we did not discuss in detail how the uh, errors themselves uh, got calculated. So, in this uh, exercise, we are going to do this. And to do so, uh, we have to recall that if y is log of x, then the error in y is nothing but error in x by x. That comes because we take uh, dou y by dou x and sigma x. So, log x if you differentiate that it gives you 1 by x. So, if you know the error in uh, the, the, the x quantity sigma x, then sigma x by x will be the error in uh, log of that quantity which is y. And similarly, if y is exponential x, the error in y will be just uh, the error in x multiplied by the um, x it, uh, itself. So, so, we are going to take this uh, quantity and uh, we are going to fit it for k by t to the power b and uh, we are going to linearize by taking logarithm. And so, log k by t to the power b, error in k is known and we are going to assume that the temperature has negligible or no error. And uh, in order to fit with different weights, we have to use the error that is given for k. And uh, when we fitted last time, we had been a bit sloppy because we just took the error value. But we know that because we have done the log transformation, the error should also be transformed by making it a sigma x by x. So, the whatever error that was given for k, that is the delta k should be divided by k and that should be the error that should be used for fitting purposes. So, we are going to do this exercise now and then once the fit is known of course, you will know log a and the standard error in log a from which we are going to get the a value and the error in a value. And because it is exponential now you have to use the other formula uh, where you said that it is x into sigma x is the error in uh, sigma y. And uh, after fit of course, Ea is known and it is straightforward to calculate the error in Ea. So, this is the exercise we are going to do and uh, the paper that I had referred to also has the data for cyanide interaction uh, reaction with oxygen and I am going to leave that as an exercise for you to do and calculate the parameters as well as errors in them. So, that is what uh, we, you will do. But for now, we will take the uh, cyanide hydrogen data and uh, do the uh, exercise as we did uh, last time. But this time, we will be a little bit more careful with uh, the way we calculate the errors. Okay, so, let us do this exercise. So, first we are going to read the data and inverse t is nothing but 1 by t and log k is nothing but the k value and it is 10 power 10 remembered. So, we can plot inverse t versus log k and log k by t is nothing but a logarithm of k 
divided by uh, t to the power 2.45. And now the standard deviation that we have for k has to be transformed because it has to be divided by the k itself. And because this uh, y I mean t to the power 2.45 is a constant and we are going to consider it like some alpha and so we are going to just carry that constant. And so this is the standard deviation and so the variance is square and we are going to use 1 by uh, standard variance as the weight for our fitting exercise. So this is the fitting exercise and this is the uh, summary fit. So let us run this uh, code. So we have this uh, uh, t versus log k and it has a slight curvature because it is also dependent on t through the other formula. Now we have the uh, estimated value for intercept and the standard error and so you can calculate, um, so you can this is the standard error. So if you have the exponential of uh, um, So you get 4.366148 into 10 power 5 as the intercept and to calculate the error you have to multiply by the standard error because that is this is a transformation where we are taking exponential. So the correct answer is now 4.36 plus or minus 0 0.5 into 10 power 5. Similarly, you have the uh, fit uh, coefficient 2 and that is Ea by R. So, we have to multiply by the universal gas constant and that gives you 9.9 .9 kilojoules. And to calculate error in this uh, uh, quantity, uh, we just have to take this uh, um, value and multiply by So, so we have uh, minus 9.9 plus or minus 0 0.9 kilojoules as the fitting parameter, right. So all this we did uh, by using the formula um, linear model. So we fitted the log k by t versus uh, uh, 1 by t and of course there are other ways of fitting. So let us try some other uh, ways of fitting also. So we will use the library mass and uh, we will do robust linear model, right. So we have done the uh, robust uh, linear model and same formula we have fitted and using the same weights. Now you can see that uh, uh, this is the value. So it is 4.3 again and if you multiply this quantity by uh, you will get, so it is 4.3 plus or minus 0.2 into 10 to the power 5, right. So, so that is what we get and in this case again um, you have to multiply by 8.31452. Uh, dollar coefficients um, 2. So it gives 9.9 .9 and if you want to calculate the error in this quantity of course we have to multiply by the error because this is standard. So it is just um, addition right. So so it is 9.9 .9 plus or minus 0 0.3 uh, kilojoules uh, um, per mole per second um, is the um, uh, kilojoules uh, per mole per uh, Kelvin is the activation energy that you get uh, from uh, this uh, uh, fitting. Of course, you can do one more uh, where uh, we are going to do the nonlinear fitting. Let us do that 
and see how it is different from ours. See in this case uh, we are going to do the uh, fitting by just taking k and saying that it is a t to the power 2.45 into exponential some um, activation energy which is scaled by the universal gas constant times uh, temperature and the data is y and uh, we have to give some initial values for uh, the a values and uh, the en values and the weights are of course uh, in this case uh, we have not done any transformation so we are just going to take the uh, variance squared okay so now you can see that we have fitted and you can see in this case also it is 3.9 uh, plus or minus 0.7 and here again you have to just multiply by uh, 8.3145 to get the um, values right right so it is 9.5 and the error so it is 9.5 plus or minus 0.7 uh, kilojoules per mole um, per uh, kelvin is the uh, activation energy so uh, the the good news is that we are getting the same value uh, of um, um, about 4, 4.3, 3.9 uh, as the um, estimate for the A, the pre-exponential constant and we are getting the same uh, 9.5 kilojoule uh, for the um, 9.5, 9.9 and 9.9. Uh, so, which is the um, activation energy we are getting. So, to summarize, uh, we have learnt about error propagation uh, in the error analysis. So, we know how the error should go and uh, knowing that if a transformation is log or exponentiation, we know how the error should be calculated. So, when you do fitting and for fitting when you do transformation on the variables, when the error is given for those variables, so they should also be accordingly transformed. And in this case, uh, we were doing a weighted fitting by giving different weights to different points, which is based on the variance of uh, that uh, particular data measurement. So, when we do the transformation, we have to keep track of the transformation on the error also. If you do that, then you get the uh, fitting and once you have fitted from the standard error, that you get for the fitted parameters, you can also give the error in the quantity that you are trying to estimate. And uh, again, you have to use the error uh, propagation formulae that we have learnt uh, in terms of exponentials, just adding and, and constant and things like that. And once you do that, you can give these uh, parameters. So, when you have some experimental data and when you have done some fitting, when you want to report, uh, it is always a good idea to also report the error. And for doing that, uh, you can use the information that you get uh, while fitting as the standard error and uh, you, you can report it so that people have a clearer idea about the accuracy to which you are reporting your uh, uh, values that you have estimated. So, there is uh, uh, two more data sets uh, that is available uh, in from the same paper and uh, we are going to share those data also in CSV format with you. So, I strongly recommend that you do similar exercise and that is a far more easier exercise because there is no t to the power 2.45 in those cases. It is straightforward uh, Arrhenius uh, fit uh, k which is the reaction rate is some a times exponential minus ea by rt. So, your uh, uh, task is to evaluate the a and uh, the ea and you can do that by linearizing and fitting. Uh, but while linearizing because you are taking a logarithm and because the error is given in k, uh, you should also calculate the uh, error accordingly and use that to weight when you are doing the fitting. So, that is the part that you need to do and then you can get those uh, parameters of fitting and you can compare with what is given in the paper. 
And in this case of course, uh, what is given in the paper does not match with what we are getting. Uh, but consistently the different methods are giving values which are comparable. So, I assume that what we are doing is okay, but of course, you are welcome to um, dig deeper and, and convince yourself that what we are doing is okay. And if not, you should let us know. Thank you.